Welcome guys, welcome to the Third Eye Chakra Consciousness. We are starting a new week on the Third Eye Chakra and my name is Hannah from Reality Awareness. If you guys don't know me already, so welcome to this live stream in the beautiful, it's almost the Australian Outback, but it's quite, it's kind of not, it's, it's hinterland, definitely hinterland. Let me share this live stream so I can be super present with you guys as we dive right into the Third Eye Chakra wig. So I'm really curious how you guys went on the crown chakra week. Lots of new ideas, lots of anger, lots of grief coming out and pouring out in all different places, I'm sure. So, all right, let me, let me share and be super present with you guys. So say hi when you're here. The third eye, all about relationships. Hey, Tamsin. If you guys are watching the replay, let me know you're watching the replay. Hi, Jenny. Kookaburras were going berserk just before. I was like, oh, we're going to catch them on live stream, but they're probably they're around. They've been, <laughs> been going off all morning. It's quite amazing. I don't know if you guys have seen my stories or not, but like the birds, like first thing in the morning, it's just like so loud, <laughs> but it's awesome. It's awesome. Hi, Danny. All right, let me share this. I'm curious how you guys are feeling too, because um, I don't know. I don't know if it's just I've been like super focused and getting back in my flow. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Christina. All right. You miss me? Is that because I haven't been sharing, um, I haven't been live streaming much? <laughs> I've been filming, trust me, I'm coming. <laughs> I was uh, filming all day yesterday afternoon. I loved it. Super loved it. There's the kookaburras. <laughs> they are saying hi. <laughs> All right, awesome. Cool. All shared, ready to start. So kookaburra, I'm sure you've heard me uh, talk in in the past or what have you. Kookaburras are, I think it's garnet in the liquid crystals and it is manifestation of purpose. So yeah, it's quite amazing that they've been really strong around. Yeah, yeah, it's so special. All right. So I just checking all these comments. Oh, hi, Philomena, Alana. Hi, 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 hi. I knew I thought I missed some. I had a feeling about that. <laughs> Tamsin says major life changes been going on just nonstop. Yeah, it's been, you know, when we look at like major life changes, it's a complete paradigm shift, right? We just come out of the crown and that's a complete paradigm shift, right? And then we're like, as I said last week, we're already tapping into the third eye. We're already starting to awaken this chakra when we're working on this because the energy is already there, right? And so when we look at the third eye chakra, we're able to see a different perspective with a higher perspective, right? So when you think about the crown being closed, and depressed and pressed and shut down it's like then we're gonna have like a negative or we're gonna see tainted like we're gonna see with rose colored glasses on right but when we open up our crown let the light in and let that source energy in our vision is seen with a, a higher consciousness a higher perspective a, a lighter light if you may right we we tend to see the positive more rapidly than in the negative yeah now that's not always the case if we're not consciously working on that connection with the divine because that really is what the crown is and you know there's a lot of you know specific drugs and stuff that like really opens the crown for example and like enhances your connection to spirit but then when it wears off then it closes again right and what i'm passionate about teaching you guys is to have that connection all the time like there's a lot of highly sensitive highly tuned in people in the world that just don't know how to use that gift and how to channel it how to stay connected like it's open close open close right so with the major life changes, it's very, very normal because when we're opening as a whole paradigm shift, a whole new energy, a whole new light. And so it like, 
it, it changes everything, right? It starts to change. And, and with the major life changes, as I always say, when we're working on the crown, we're working on the base at the same time because they're both one in from the top and the bottom. And so the base chakra is all about your physical reality, um, your security, your home, physical life, your physical relationships, finances, like all, all the life stuff, right? <laughs> so yeah, it's amazing. No surprise really. Hey, Benjamin. Tammy says, for the last two, maybe three weeks, I've had seven doves out on my fence. Oh, and I've been swimming each other. Oh, they're so amazing. So, so much peace. And there are clear quartz, deeply connected to clear quartz energy. All right. So, um, I was just looking at the, at the background here. Um, on the camera, it almost looks fake. <laughs> so funny. So beautiful. <laughs> but it's not fake. It's a beautiful, clear blue sky here this morning. So... All right, so let's talk third eye. So if you guys have any questions about the third eye, please let me know. Please type them in as I go, even if you're on replay. The biggest thing about the third eye chakra is that a lot of people, you know, like just like, let's open the third eye. And, you know, in, in a mainstream perspective, a lot of people only know about the third eye, right? Like a clairvoyance, you know, sees, you know, that's, that's who you go to a psychic clairvoyant, right? This very common names. And... A lot of people, you know, want to open their third eye. A lot of people want to see angels. A lot of people want to see colors. They want to see these things. And what a lot of people forget is that things like that is a muscle, right? We don't just go to the gym and then are all of a sudden fit, like in one session. Like it doesn't, it doesn't work like that, right? We might be sore and tired. I'm like, oh, do we have to do this again, <laughs> right? And it's kind of like we know if we continue, we're going to achieve the results that we desire. Now, with the third eye, with all our spiritual organs, they are a muscle and it's the same principle that's applied there, right? So in opening your third eye, you might... Okay, tell me if you guys see this... <laughs> So when you work to open your third eye, maybe you're meditating and maybe you're doing some practices to help support that. When you start actually seeing stuff, right? And you start seeing, you're like, oh, I'm seeing, and then it disappears. Who, who has that go on? I'm really, really curious if that's something that you've experienced before. And then it's almost like, and then you never see it again. And you're like, well, what's happening here, right? The thing about training yourself to see visions, to see, um, you know, angels, auras, colors, that sort of thing, is it takes practice and it takes a uh, relationship building. Okay, so what they just showed me is to liken it to, right? So, you know, when you, you meet somebody and you're like, oh, yeah, and you kind of had this, um, yep, yeah, that's you sometimes, Richard, yeah. And you like have this connection with this person, and you're like, oh, yeah, and it's like really kind of alive and like, yeah, that's good, right? And, and then it's like, you know, and then you'll go away and do your life sort of thing, and then you, you don't really see them again, right? But when you do see them again, you might not see the same things as when you first met them right? Like you, you'll see them, but you don't almost have that same excitement. Like maybe you do, right? But you're seeing a different perspective of them because maybe you get to know them a bit better. You're seeing another layer of them. You see another layer of them. So that first instance of when you first met them kind of doesn't really happen again, right? Now, what I mean when I liken that to your clairvoyance and seeing a vision, for example, it's not that you'll never see that vision again, right? What happens is that you're seeing a different perspective of it. So the third eye is about seeing the truth, right? If there was one word for a third eye, I'd say relationships, but there's more than one word. <laughs> We're seeing, it's, it's all about relationships relating to everything, but it's also about seeing the truth in that relationship, right? So when we see the truth in the relationship, it's literally like seeing past the facade, right? We're seeing through them, so to speak. And when we see, see through, we see through another vortex, right? We can see portals anywhere if we train ourselves to look for them. And so just because you had a vision and you're like, oh, I see, and then it disappeared, it's not that it's 
not there again, but you're seeing deeper or you're seeing further or you're seeing in a different light. Does that make sense, right? So when you can realize that you're seeing a bigger perspective, these are all third eye words, right? Seeing the bigger picture, seeing a bird's eye view, seeing an eagle eyes view, seeing a, the, the big picture and seeing through, seeing through to the truth, then it's not that you're not seeing that vision, you're just seeing through it, right? Now, yes, we can train ourselves to see visions, but the thing is, is that we don't need to train ourselves to see them. We need to train ourselves to catch them, yeah? And what I mean by that is that when we are sleeping, we're always dreaming. When we are sleeping, we are always dreaming, whether we're conscious of it or not. Who agrees with that? All right? Give me some love hearts if you agree with that. When we are awake, we are constantly daydreaming. Hey, Loretta. When we are awake, we are constantly daydreaming. So it's not that we have to train ourselves to see the visions. We have to train ourselves to catch the visions. I'm covered in goosebumps about this. What I mean by this, right, is that we are constantly connected. We are always connected. We are, every single person on this planet is connected to source. Or we wouldn't be a living, breathing element without it. It's a fact, right? When, when somebody's life force is not in their body anymore, their life force is back to source in a way, or wherever we go for that moment in time, right? We are always connected to source, but it's our conscious awareness of the connection. So we are constantly, so Christina says daydream constantly. We have to train ourselves to catch the visions. Now, when I read The Mist of Avalon, hi Linda, hi Renelle, I saw you guys all jump on, lovely to have you here. Um, yes, Danny says yes. So when we are able to catch these visions and know that they're there, right? Because a thing that a book that changed me <laughs> was The Mist of Avalon, right? And it actually came up the other day when I was in one of the spiritual shops and the woman just started talking about it. She's like, that book changed me. And I'm like, yeah, it changed me too. <laughs> and it taught me to catch the visions. It taught me to realize the visions in a real time space in a way. And in that regard, right, so when you're doing the dishes, when you're driving, when you're, you know, doing something and then all of a sudden you're like, whoa, like, what, what was I doing? Like, where was I? Or hang on a sec. <laughs> like, instead of brushing them off, start catching them. Start going, ooh, what was I just seeing? Like, so you know when we, we wake up from a sleep dream? Or we wake up and we're like, oh, I know I was dreaming. And we kind of just wait there a minute. And we're like, hang on a sec. And we're trying to like remember what it is. Like, same thing in a daydream. Okay. These dreams, third eye is deeply connected to dreams. And your clairvoyance and receiving intuition is via your dreams is a, is a definite piece of the third eye, right? It's one deep aspect of it. So your, your daydreams are exactly the same. So instead of like, well, hang on a sec, what was I doing? <laughs> like get back to conscious, you know, physical, physical or reality or whatever it is. When we are able to catch that daydream and instead of like brushing it off, like, hang on, just remember like when you're waking up from a sleep dream and you're like, hang on a sec, hang on, what was that, right? And you'll start to remember them, right? Now, not all the time. And it's so important that um, you start using language that supports your increasing intuition and your increasing clairvoyance. And what do I mean by that? It's kind of like people are like, oh, I don't see, I don't see colors and I don't see whatever. Like, I don't see that. You know, people talk, I'm like, oh, I wish I could see. It's like, do you know what? I bet you see more than you realize. I bet you see angel numbers everywhere. I bet you see double ones and triple ones everywhere. I bet you see number plates that jump out of you. I bet you see feathers and coins. I bet you see signs on TVs and, well, I don't know, do we watch TV anymore? <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? And, I don't know, street posts or Facebook or whatever. I don't know what everyone's saying. I bet you see those things and they're like, 
oh yeah, I do. And I'm like, yeah, so you're really clairvoyant, right? And we have to remember that just like in our sleeping dreams, our waking dreams, daydreaming is exactly the same. Okay, and when we, when we can start to grasp that concept and pull both those aspects together, we realize that we are absolutely connected 100% of the time and we are never not connected. And, and it starts to merge almost day and night together in a way of a understanding of our soul and our consciousness and how we are like we're interconnected like there's there's no difference between sleeping dream and a daydream when you're awake it's our conscious awareness of where our internal reality is basically right and what i mean by that tammy says she sees feathers and coins all the time also here yeah exactly right and so when we can realize that we're starting to understand that there's no difference between a sleep dream between a daydream and our waking dream this um space here right seeing yep feathers plates numbers um all the time for me and lila yes says demi uh, tammy th third person things yes you hear third person things Christina says, I see feathers and number sequences. One, 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 three, 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 four, 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 one, oh, one, one. Yes. Yeah. Linda says, I see one, one and 11 and one, one, one all the time. Exactly right. And when you can start to realize that that is your clairvoyance, that is your angels, that is your higher self, that is spirit source, whatever label you want to put on it, that is them getting a message to you. You can start to go, I'm highly clairvoyant. I'm seeing messages everywhere right i now look with my three eyes right when you can train yourself that you have three eyes and not two oof, just like the sleep and the wake comes together so too does your reality change and what i i'm really um i'm wanting to describe something and i'm wondering if you guys are understanding the concept of what i'm trying to portray here it's like when we can really grasp the concept and feel it and know it that this sleeping dream and the waking daydream there is no difference right like that aspect of you let's just call it soul for now right your soul when you're sleeping physically your physical your soul's not sleeping like your soul doesn't sleep your soul doesn't have a human body cycle right so your soul is constantly awake right your soul is constantly conscious yeah and so when you're sleeping and when you're awake that aspect of you your soul it's it's still connected right it's the human body connection that needs the repair and sleep and cycles and whatever right it's not your soul and so when you can realize that your soul is always connected there's no separation between the worlds does that make sense i'm finding it difficult to put into words the concept i'm trying to convey in the third eye chakra right now, and the reason that I'm trying to convey this concept is because when we can understand and really even just train yourself and start anchoring in the fact that my daydreams and my waking dreams are coming from the same place, like there is no separation there, covered in goosebumps as I say this, what we can start to do is literally see the portals and the realms open up in a physical reality here, just like a pixelated game, just like a pixelated screen right and i know that's like pff, kind of like blasts reality out of proportion right but this is then how you start to advance your psychic abilities and increase your attunement to sensitivity of energy to ley lines to portals to um spirits in the spirit world to bad spirits to good spirits if you want to label them like that like the vibration you know all that sort of thing and then not only can you start to see portals that open up in a pixelated screen like right here and step through and blah 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 right and we realize that as we open this little portal pixel right here it's like a whole nother galaxy universe doorway dimension right here then we can really start using that sort of a skill with your highly attuned clairvoyance and realizing the connection between your sleep dream and your daydream is no different than that connection is right here too all the time let me know if this guy this is a little bit like whoa hannah like <laughs> i don't know about the pixel portal stuff it's kind of interesting right uh, okay, so so Tammy says inside my head in my own voice and it's 
Only is it third person information? Yes. Yeah, we trust that. So Danny said when I started the Crystalline download last night, the time was 11.11. Of course it was. <laughs> of course it was. Hey, Joy. Yes, yes. So Tammy says I've begun asking for downloads of codes for my spiritual growth. Perfect. Yes, we must ask for the upgrades, guys. Demi says, I haven't been on Facebook for so long and love how this video I see. <laughs> of course. I love it so much. That's awesome. Of course you did. Okay, on point. All right, you guys are with me, right? I feel like we're going in layers here. <laughs> so when we start to access this divine connection that everybody has, right? Like I said, it's just their conscious awareness to this connection. If we want to look at this on a global scale just for a moment, okay, because of what's happening in the world right now, it's pretty intense, okay? Now, when we can understand that we as a human have um, a connection to our soul and the sleep dreams and the wake dreams, there's no difference. And with that concept, we can be in two worlds at once, basically. Okay, and this is where the multi-dimensional self, the multifaceted self comes into play that yes, you're in this human physical body right now and you're grounded on this earth, but you have access via your clairvoyance, via all your spiritual intuition, right? Via your body, by the way, because you're deeply connected, right? You can feel it, you can see it, you can know it, you can hear the, oh, the whole package, yeah? And when we can really train our three eyes, right, and walk around and like, what is my three eyes seeing right now? Like, what are my three eyes seeing right now? And you will start to see between the worlds, right? Now, even if it's like sparkles through the others or, um, you know, especially if you sit down and meditate and fully relax yourself, and th this is the most important key piece, right? Get out of the flight or fight, yeah? get out of the flight or fight, it's going to switch off that hyper, like, it's almost like it shuts everything down when we're in that flight or fight hyperspace, right? And so when we can switch out of that, that's when we start to relax, our system relaxes, what happens? Everything opens, yeah? Everything opens and we're going to see more, all of that, okay? Now you can ask, what do I need to see in this space? What do I need to see in this other space? What's going on over there, right? Because when we can really know that there is no differentiation between your sleep dreams and your daydreams, right? It's just your conscious awareness of that. And then you are able to know that, you know, like when we're in a dream, like sleep dream, right? And we're like, even a daydream, sleep dream. And we're like, wake up and we're like, oh, I was like visiting you last night. Or like, oh, I was with Hannah. <laughs> no, like this is the thing, right? I get people message me like, oh, we were like chatting last night in my dreams. I'm like, oh, that happens. <laughs> so it's like, you know, we can travel in certain places, right? And when we can realize that we're doing that in our sleep dream, when we start accessing that in our daydreams, right? And we're like catching ourselves, and we're training and we're merging those two together then what we do is we can access that anytime we choose, anytime we ask, anytime we da 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 right? What is that person doing? What is happening in that state? What is happening in that country, right? Take a look. And it needs a pixel portal, right? Right there, right? Because if time and space are really made up things in this 3D dimension and the other dimensions are all intertwined with it, like, there is no separation in that. Like it's literally opening a door and stepping through, right? And that might be like, ah, oh, Hannah, I don't know about that, right? And I'm like, try it, try it. Get a, get a spiritual study buddy and freaking try it. <laughs> like, you know, like practice, have practice sessions. Like, you know, like meet up with somebody like online or on a phone call or something and practice your intuitive skills. Like literally, take a walk around that person's house that you've never met before or you you know never met in person before and literally ask for feedback of that person of who you're on the phone with like practice your skills right like this is a thing like an athlete doesn't become an olympic champion by not practicing do you know what i mean like we can we can practice our skills and we can amplify anything right we can see in the ground and then when we're seeing in the ground, we can take our highest spiritual light and thought with us and transform what we're seeing with the highest light at the same time.
You want to talk about a healer's role? You want to talk about why you're an empath and you feel everything? You want to talk about why you have these gifts that people think you're crazy? Although, by the way, like the world's starting to accept it more. And just in a few years time, everyone will be like coming to us. Like, trust me, right? <laughs> it's time. Our time is coming. <laughs> so when we can access these skills, okay, everybody has them. Everybody has this sense of, okay, right? Because when people say to me, oh, no, 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 like, um, you know, we, we don't, um, I, I'm not intuitive. Nah, that's not something I, I do. I'm like, oh, what do, you, what do you feel like for dinner? Oh, yeah, I feel like, oh, I feel like this for dinner. And I'm like, oh, you just tune into your intuition to figure out what you are for dinner. People might say, ah, that's cravings, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, man, they just had to tune in to like see what they feel like for dinner. I'm like, that's so quite a sentence, <laughs> right? So everybody has that capacity. Now, when you understand that everybody on the planet has the capacity, even the bad people, okay? When you can realize that everybody has that capacity, that's when we can hold the highest perspective for our world, for our universe, for everything that's happening, everything that we're seeing in the world and it's so bad and those videos that go viral. I, I got sent one this morning and I was like, I wonder if that was staged. Now, maybe it wasn't, maybe it was a real video, but it came to me afterwards, I was like, is that staged because they know it would go viral and they're spreading the fear that way to keep people <laughs> under control? It's not necessarily, I mean, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, right? But people see that they're going to stay away. They're going to comply, right? Just by something they see, just by something they read and they believe because that's what they've been trained in 12 years of schooling is to read and believe what the authority tells you, what the person at the front tells you. They don't tell you that you are divinely connected in both realms at the same time, in all realms at the same time. They don't connect, to, they don't tell you that you have these gifts and abilities because they would, we would then surpass the people in control and we wouldn't even be in this dimension anymore, which is already happening and rapidly shifting. So when we can start to use this skill of being in multi dimensions at the same time, we can choose to see what we're seeing underground and choose to bring the highest perspective and the highest light knowing that we are being shown this in the world because it's finally time for it to come up from the subconscious and become conscious and rewire, reframe, re-everything to everything that we've learned and believe from all the time. Hello, new paradigm shift. Okay, the light is coming up. We're crowning, we're coming, we're birthing a whole new reality right? So when we can look at the world events, okay, and know that everything we are seeing, we are being shown for a reason. Number one, to see through to the truth, to see beyond what we're being shown on the camera, on the, on the videos that go viral, on all that stuff, because most of them are staged. Because if you really understood AI, the artificial intelligence grid, that is how they control people. This is not like I've said before, this is a this is a mind consciousness war. This is a consciousness war. There is no other weapons involved yet. Now people might disagree and they might be like, there's a biochemical stuff going on. And I'm like, yeah, they're saying that. Has anyone actually received the vaccination yet? Was there a lot of fear about it and the whole compliance stuff going on? And it's like, well, yeah, that stuff's really happening, Hannah. It's like, yes. And the more we start to look at what we're being shown without seeing through to the truth of it behind it and who has the strings who is saying what really and the person on the front is just the the speaker if you may the microphone okay so i encourage you that with your conscious awareness now that you realize and you can engage this skill and this muscle that there's no differentiation between our sleeping dreams 
and our waking daydreams, that place is the same aspect, the same concept, the same place. When you can really grasp that concept, what then starts to happen is when you start seeing you start seeing this truth and you start seeing this, like literally like seeing beyond the screen. Like I encourage you to train yourself and train your skills, right? I'm like, is this a green screen or is this weird? real, right? I'm telling you it's real. I can, I've got my boots on and stuff. But anyway, anyway um, <laughs> the point is I'm saying, right? Train yourself to see through the screen. Train yourself to see what you're being shown on a video or a, uh, an article or anything and train yourself to see through it. Now, that might mean asking more questions. The thing that and you've probably seen me post a bit recently is like, who posted this? Where did this originally come from? Um, where, where was this filmed? Like, question, right? Because if something is off, it usually is. Right? It's, it's like uh, getting into a relationship with a narcissist. If something is off, it usually is, right? Trust intuition. This applies to this. We're under control of an um, authoritarian parents, authoritarian government, right? Now, when we can train ourselves to harness that stability of the connection between our sleeping dreams and our waking dreams, for example, when we can harness and accentuate and strengthen our connection to that place and know that there's no separation between those places, that's when we come into a deep, deep power. That's when we come into a deep, deep grounded self that can hold to the space of authority. And people who harness this skill know that even in the face of authority in any way, which shape or form, when we can hold that space and hold our deeply grounded, strengthened connection and ground in that space, what actually happens then is because it's so deeply anchored in truth, the above, the below, like it is so anchored and solid within you because you have trained your skills and now you are an Olympic clairvoyant who has that such a strong sense of connection, right? To source that there is no differentiation between a sleeping dream and a waking dream, that place that the multidimensional portals are available to us all, that means that when we are standing in the face of authority, no matter which way and shape or form that is, we can call upon that deep connection. That means that realms of possibility open up. That means that we are no longer standing there by ourselves with an army of soldiers in front of us. We are standing there with an army of portals and dimensionals in front of us and around us. That means that when we can hold our grounds, and yeah, we might shake at that. Remember when we start speaking our truth? Remember when we start actually seeing the truth of the reality and we start going, oh, wow, this is like not okay for me now. I need to start saying no so that I can protect my energy and start to oh, get my power back, right? And when the first time we say no to somebody, we feel a whole pile of guilt. <sighs> But then we do it again because it keeps our boundaries and we feel better and better. And then we say no and we don't even think about it and we don't even go into it because we're like, oh, I'm scared of it because it feels better. Doesn't mean that in the face of authority that things don't feel scary, but we stay connected. We stay grounded because when we are calling someone out on their bullshit and we know when we see straight through it and we can hold our ground with that, it's a bit like you know, that um, tool of using Archangel Michael's sword of truth. And it is the epitome of that. You are literally lovingly placing that sword of truth, that sword of light inside that person, lovingly, gently. And if they are lying, if they are not connected to the truth of the highest source in service for humanity and in service for all, they will start fumbling their words. They will start getting sweaty and agitated and they will probably might fire up at you for telling you how bad you are for doing blah, 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 blah. And you're still holding the ground and you're still holding that sort of truth in there. Nothing can knock the truth. Sure, they might kill you. What's the worst that could happen? They could kill you. 
what's gonna happen oh well in this current cycle that you guys have like created that you reincarnate us for whatever reason the cycles the mediumship the present the past the future all third eye all right here baby this is the realm we are in right now mm -hmm. past present future seeing the truth through all the dimensions of time e that even means seeing the truth about the bigger picture about why this is even happening because they are losing control what is that at the crown chakra it is about control if people are not connected to source and everybody is connected and down in their beautiful loving life purpose people are closed off that means they're not connecting to source to get their true feed okay remember from last week we spoke about this and in previous crown chakras we've spoken about this right everybody must be connected to source and then we all live in harmony at present a lot of people are closed off so what does that mean that means they have to be in control over power and suck the life force from other people because they don't have the courage nor connection or skills to connect to source and feed themselves so when we can be aware of this big picture that's going on third eye okay when we can know and hold that truth people we're watching on the the videos on the tv whatever it is right we can be like oh this beautiful loving beaming white sort of truth let me just insert it into you are you telling the truth notice what starts to happen lovingly hold it there and maybe have 15 of them and everyone that's on the camera crew and everything starts changing or not imagine if we all did that when we see this big picture view and we can deeply stay connected to that truth right you want to advance your psychic skills know that there is no separation between you and source between sleeping and waking between any aspect of your day-to-day -day life okay when you can embody that level of consciousness there is no separation you can hear the trees talk you can hear the wind speak and the birds <laughs> right When there is that level of connection and you are deeply present deeply grounded in the present third eye is about the past the present and the future when you are deeply connected right now you are you have access to you are in all of the past whilst being deeply present and all of the futures whilst being deeply present because you know that actually when you collapse the timelines and when you are able to see into the realms of all of those at once there is no separation there is no differentiation between any of it and that is where your power is that is where your deepest connection is in the right now anything that is blocking your third eye is a reality is a choice is a dimension there is also a dimension where you see everything you see through the veil you see through the realms you see through the universes without leaving your body why because you know that it all exists right here Tell me guys how you're feeling about this third eye. We've gone pretty deep here. <laughs> We've gone pretty deep here. <laughs> I'm curious if you guys have got any questions. Let me have a drink and see if there's anything else that wants to come through about third eye because this is not what I thought we were going to talk about. But of course, I trust what intuitively comes through. So each year we do these chakra journeys. They're all very different when I'm talking about the third eye, but the third eyes are all different. So I think it really is tuning into what the collective consciousness needs about the third eye for example in the right now in the right now hmm. and I am going to move this back a bit because the Sun moved all right so while I'm waiting for questions so pieces about the third eye right is like I said third eye 
seeing past, present and future all at the same time. So at the third eye, we're deeply diving into the past to unlock past contracts, vows, anything that we may have said in the past or in a relationship and that relationship is carried over and carried over and carried over and, you know, and it, especially if you can't, I don't know, find a relationship now or something, it's important to go and unlock vows from, you know, when you're a past life as a monk or when you're a past life as a such and such. Okay. All right. There's a reason I started talking about that because I'm like, okay, what else do I need to talk about with the third eye? So, you know how... <laughs> All this stuff has, all the truth has surfaced about the realities lately, right? Via lockdown, we've been showing so many things about the government and underground and Hollywood and all the jazz, right? Now, this stuff has been around for eons, but it is just coming to light and to surface now for quite a lot of people, right? Hence the Great Awakening. Now, when we have... Um, Great question, Tammy. I'll answer that in a moment. So when we can understand the big grand concept, you know, like for me, even the past maybe 18 months, and I've been working with my clients and I'm like, okay, like, you know, use this past life meditation that I have, like, and I give it to them to unlock the vows and we unlock all these contracts and stuff in the past. And, you know, and, you know, it's always usually quite torturous how we died or quite graphic or violent or rape or whatever it is, right? And, you know, the past 18 months, I've been like, why is it always like that? Like, where's the good stuff in a way, right? And of course we can do the past life meditation with the intention of um, uh, reclaiming the good stuff that happened and the gifts in that lifetime. Well, I do that anyway in any past life, right? So on my um, website, if you are keen to explore that, it's not just like, oh, let's just see what happened in my past life. Like there's a, it's a healing and integration meditation. Like it helps to unlock blocks and any stuck points in your life or if you can't manifest what you want, like there's probably something blocking, especially if you've done like childhood work or anything like that family system work, it goes deeper into our previous life. So if you haven't cleared that bit, really important. So here we are talking about third eye it's the relationships and we kind of you know clear out all the relationships we've had from all of our childhood from our family lineage system from all the webs of connection of all the relationships because we are in relationship to everything right we are relating to everything all the time whether it's a person or our phone or whatever like we have a relationship with it right with our food with our drink whatever okay now i've been asking why why are the past lives so graphic why why are they all so violent why why do we even have past lives and why like you know it's like what is the purpose of life like we just reincarnate and we just come back like ugh, what for right and then all this stuff's come to light and i'm like oh because we're actually trapped in this vortex of this dimension of whatever they've done and that's why we keep reincarnating and the souls keep coming back because they're siphoning off us. Like, I'm just like, wow, this is, of course, right? So when we look at that and that shift, it's kind of like, whoa, like talk about a reality perception shift. So what if we don't have to do that anymore? What if by conscious soul choice, we choose not to, this is just a out there idea, right? <laughs> What if by conscious choice we choose to not come back and soul incarnate in this on this planet and dimension anymore? What if we are shifting to another dimension or what if we are consciously now in this body right now, not waiting till we die, we're doing it now, right? We're doing the work now to shift Earth, humanity, whatever, our solar system, galaxy, whatever. What if we're doing the conscious work now to open another dimensional vortex now so we can actually keep evolving and ascending instead of coming back on the plane and keep going back in the cycle so they can cycle and, you know, um, siphon us. Isn't it interesting? And that was what just, lots of messages coming through. Um, that's what just dropped in now, right? So, you know, really, um, death, especially in the Western world, is quite taboo. So freaking interesting, right? Like, Death is a bigger ceremony as a wedding or a birth in some cultures, but in the Western society, it's like, don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. Go to a funeral? Oh, see you at work tomorrow. Like, you know, it's a bit like our um, menstrual cycles. You know what I mean? Like, it's just so cut out of how it should be from the tribal stuff, right? Um, and so what if right now with this reality shift and this perspective like great awakening 
crown opening we're starting to see the truth and connecting to the truth what if we're seeing different dimensions and we can choose that that old karmic cycle that that old grid actually gets to be released now i was going to say it before and then i kept talking and on sunday sunday friday my assistant um was channeling like rewriting out the the full moon ceremony that i did priestess code number two she's like hannah when i was writing this i'm like people need this like now like this is something that i would listen to over and over again and like you know when i do them i'm like well it was amazing and then i kind of forget what i do in them right and when i was like reading over it because i re-record it i was like wow yeah people need this now so keep an eye out if you're struggling or wondering like how do we shift this how do we how do we change all the crap we're seeing in the world right now like I'm covered in goosebumps to so say this like what I'm about to release from that precess code number two and like I wasn't gonna release I, I don't know what I'm doing with the precess codes yet I'm just like okay I'm doing the precess codes but I'm actually gonna release that soon um, in the coming days because that is like that was such a shift like out of that old grid out of that old dimension and into where we're wanting it to be you know like it was so a whole perspective of reality is shifting and this is the third eye chakra about seeing the truth in the reality and obviously the shifts and perspectives that come from seeing that truth like our reality shifts like we've got these rose colored glasses on or glasses on <laughs> for quite some time and every time we have an aha moment we're like whoa we're seeing things in a different light right so we're seeing the truth we might be looking at the same thing but we can see more yeah so all right so let's have a look here these questions so tammy said why why is anger seemingly always right at the surface for me okay so number one anger is underneath so underneath all anger is grief okay there's usually grief underneath all anger another thing about anger is that you can be carrying somebody else's energy but the biggest thing about anger and it's so interesting you brought up the anger thing because yes anger can be deeply at the crown but at the third eye your third eye is deeply connected to your liver and at your liver is where your anger is your liver is also where your solar plexus is and so when you are in a shitty relationship or a shitty career or somewhere that is out of alignment right the third eye you're seeing you're angry internally intuitively because you know this is not where you're meant to be right i used to be angry a lot until i really got on purpose right um i was living part of my purpose i wasn't in full purpose and i was angry a lot of the time right i was in situations where i was ignoring my intuition i'm seeing this reality i know this is not right for me i'm not doing anything about it right there's grief underneath that because i know that actually i'm not living in full alignment of my soul's purpose right we're not happy until we are right usually of course we can choose to but is that that deep underneath is that real deep contentment there contentment peace if you're angry a lot of the time what are you seeing in your reality that you you're like yeah this is what i'm doing but underneath you're like mm, i know i'm not meant to be here that is where the anger comes in now liver anger right if you're on a physical level if your anger is full you're going to be angry a lot of the time like it's our filter in our body if the filter's full we're angry because it's just like all this shit in there right now the other piece about that like i said the solar plexus is where your liver is and the liver is the size of a football it's the second biggest organ in your body and when we're seeing the truth we're you know and denying the truth in our reality it's out of alignment because our solar plexus is our self-worth our trust in ourself so if we're not listening to our intuition we're not trusting ourselves. so we're going to be angry because we know we're not trusting ourselves. so we're angry at everything and it's a projected anger and actually we're angry because we're not listening to our intuition about what we need to do might be a sterile relationship career place of living all that stuff right it's out of alignment your solar plexus is your alignment piece yeah trust in yourself um self-worth self-esteem uh what else is it feeling empowered or disempowered yeah and so when we're feeling disempowered because maybe we know we need to make changes but we know we also can't at this point in time so we're angry because we're also like blah, 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 it's this cycle right so we're disempowered because we can't be empowered to make the changes that we know blah, 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 cycle okay 
So the faster we can make the intuitive changes and taking aligned action to our intuition, the faster all of that will shift. Plus, our body comes into full health because we're into alignment. Interesting, right? So Alina says, I feel like we have to reach a certain level to go on to a next step or planet. Yeah, there's definitely like an evolutionary cycle for sure. And that's the consciousness awakening, right? There's definitely stages of awakening that people go through, right? And people like, oh, you can quantum leap. And like, yeah, you can, right? But usually you have to be at a certain level of consciousness, vibration to even understand that concept and even grasp it to do it right and people are like oh people just wake up and be it it's like yeah they might do right but for a majority of humans on the planet in the current state ugh, there's usually a little bit of a a, a shift right a, it's like a spiral I keep seeing as i say that so definitely i feel like we have to become the best of us to go somewhere else yeah right and that's a conscious choice and that's a um uh yeah, conscious choice is going to say you have to be willing to do that, right? Definitely. Demi says, goosebumps is what comes to me a lot. This is what comes to me a lot. Yeah, that is another, like, that's like a clear sentience. If you wanted to label it into an intuitive pocket, it's definitely your clear sentience. Like, oh, I feel that truth, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely clear sentience. All right, so once we do our sole purpose, we go somewhere else. See, this is interesting, Alina, right? Because that is a belief system, and that is a concept. That is a, um, you know, a reality that we can also choose, I think, right? Because I always believed that too, in a sense of like, you know, once our soul purpose is done, then we die or, you know, like whatever we've come here to do, then we die. Like maybe that's a true reality and maybe that's a reality of a belief system of a spiritual lineage of something. And so even like, you know, when we hit the third eye, and everything that we once knew in our reality can be completely shattered. Why? Because when we open the crown and that light and new perspective, that higher perspective comes through and we're open to it and we are humbling ourselves enough to allow ourselves to see it, everything shifts in our reality. Because everything we once knew is totally obliterated and blown out of proportion, obliterated, blown out of the water, not out of proportion, out of the water, <laughs> And a new concept is grounded. A new concept is like, oof. now that can come with a lot of grief, right? Can come with a lot of shifts. Like when we've been holding a certain vibration for a long time and we've got this influx of new energy, like it's a higher vibration, it's a higher energy and that like infiltrates into our whole body. And so anything that's the old vibration is going to be shifted out. That's why usually big life changes happen because we're... Um, we're embodying a higher vibration and what's no longer in alignment with that higher vibration is going to dissipate like it's a thing right so yeah definitely an option and like i said i used to believe that wholeheartedly and now i'm like questioning it i'm like but what if there's something else <laughs> what if we could like sustain life for longer like i don't know let me know you guys i've always thought and said that i would live to 130. like it's just it's always been a thing like there is no no question about it. I'm like 130 is when I'm living to like that's, you know, and there's other people that have, um, especially my inner circle clients have said similar. I'm like, of course, that's why you're my inner circle client. Right. Um, when like, it's like bending the concepts of time, bending the concepts of time and space and the perspective and what we know to be true truth, seeing the true, what we know to be true can be shifted and changed with a higher perspective if we are open to it. Now, a lot of time people are not ready, right? And that's what's going on on the planet now. People are like being shaken into a shift and a wake up. And a lot of people are angry about what they're seeing, right? So, and because, because it's a change, right? And if a lot of people would grieve about the change, they would be able to shift into a clearer perspective to take action in the highest aligned space, right? So Barbara says, what do you mean when you say reinc reincarnated on the plane? So what I mean by that, um, I'll just check these comments here. Okay, cool. All right, let me... Um, so when you say, what do I mean by reincarnated on the plane? So what I mean by that is that... Um, 
there's a concept, okay? Now with what I'm sharing here, it's only a belief system. It's only a reality. It's only a concept. Um, and this one that I'm going to share comes from, I guess, the old paradigm of spirituality, if you want to call it that with a label, okay? Um, when I say reincarnated on the plane, I mean in our Earth, our Earth solar system, our Earth galaxy. I don't know which, how big it goes, right? It's almost like there's a cap on it. There's a a bubble around it that we can't leave. We can't leave and evolve and go any other plane or dimension or something like like we're kind of stuck here, right? And there's a lot that's um, come to me recently in about why that is. So, and that's like a whole nother live stream. Actually, I think I spoke a bit about it on a different live stream. So if you want more information about that, let me know. You know, and like I'd said, you know, I'd been questioning in the past 18 months. I'm like, why are we just, what's the purpose of past lives? And another aspect that I want to add to that, actually, and I know I've said this before, like for a little while, probably about 12 months ago, I kept saying, I'm like, consciousness is awakening because so many of us have done so many past life work to heal all that trauma. So we're not carrying it in our field anymore. So naturally we're lighter, naturally we're awakening, right? Because we've done the work to shift that out because that's what we do. We are transformers. We can heal anything like that is part of our gift. And that's why they're suppressing us on the plane and the planet right now, because they know that and they wouldn't have any food <laughs> if they were if we were living in our highest natural state, like we don't need the medical system, right? In a way, right? If you're conscious enough to do the work to understand all how the body works, how we can heal ourselves, blah, blah, blah. Now, when I say, what do I mean reincarnated on the plane? What I actually mean by that is there's a concept and a belief system, which I now kind of, you know, for me, it was kind of like the only thing. And I'd start a question. I'm like, but why is it like this? I'm always asking, but why? You know, when kids are like, but why? <laughs> it's like this, right? And it's like, but why? It's the best question to ask, right? So when we're reincarnated on the plane, it's like this uh, spiritual earth plane is what I'm talking about, right? So like when a person dies, um, there's an amazing book called uh, Life on the Other Side by oh, Sylvia Brown. It's a very old book um, and it was her concept um, through her mediumship work of what actually happens when a person dies and what the soul goes through in the life review. And, and this is just a concept, okay? This is just a, maybe this is how it is right now. Um, maybe there's other options, right? And this is why I'm saying that. So, you know, a person dies, their soul goes through a life review and then they go through a certain council and all this stuff. And then they choose to either go off and do other soul work in other planes of dimensions or something, or they choose to come back to this plane and reincarnate into another family or the same family system or whatever. And so we come back as another person in this life. So you know how some humans on this planet, you can see, you feel, sense them. You're like, you're an old soul. You know, you could, you've had many lives. Some kids are like highly tapped in. You're like, wow, this is a very old soul in this child's body. Um, you know, like that sort of thing. So that's what I mean when I say the term reincarnated on the plane. Um, let me know if that helps or if you've got more questions about that. Sure thing, Doreen. All right. So Joy says, is that's why lots of, is that why lots of alcoholics are typically angry people? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Because the liver is overloaded. Like alcohol is a poison. And so we're poisoning our um, liver, we have the whole body every time we have a drink, like it's a thing. And um, alcohol also suppresses our psychic abilities, you know, like, and some people might say, oh, when I'm drunk, I'm really connected. It's like, yeah. And then when you, when you wake up, you're really angry and feel sick and like, oh, it's like everything comes back and hits you sort of thing. Right. So yeah, definitely because of the, the liver. Mm -hmm. All right. So Tammy says, wow, you just struck my cord hard. I have recently been looking into pH balance in my body, heavy metals, eating meats. Yes. Yep. Exactly. Uh, Jenny says, maybe it's not all about the destination. Yeah, it's interesting, right? What about now? <laughs> what about now being the destination of all planes into the one? Alina says, I think we just go to another universe. Yeah, I see. There's so many options there, right? 130. I just adore you. <laughs> so any age, as long as the body remains functional and happy. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I've been limiting myself, Jenny. <laughs> let's, let's rewrite that right now. <laughs> 
yes no worries i will have a beautiful day i hope you do too it's so special here uh, so Tabitha, Tabitha says, I feel so angry at the moment, anger and liver. Yeah. And, it, and it's not just like a physical body, like, cause I know you do a lot of cleanses and stuff, Tabitha. It's not always the physical and it's not always the spiritual. It's both. And if you are out of alignment with your life's purpose and you are not trusting your intuition about the steps you need to take, what happens is that that intuition gets suppressed and we get exhausted because we're holding that intuition down, which is what we spoke about on the crown, right? You're blocking it out. It takes a lot of energy to hold that, you know, source energy away from you. Exhausting, right? And you're also blocking your intuition. You don't trust yourself, which is the solar plexus, because you're not you're seeing a reality that you're not happy with but you're like oh this is just how it is and I've got these glasses on and my life's amazing but underneath you're seething inside and and if we're not paying attention to that we will get physically sick and that's how much your intuition is trying to wake you up and put you on the path as soon as you start taking steps in alignment with your life purpose everything changes everything lightens up and it's like oh the flow again right it's a thing yeah, it is a thing. Hi, Corey. Yes, receive, receive. Out of alignment. Yes, trust all plexus. Yeah, it's a thing, right? And, you know, when we're not seeing what we want to be seeing, we'll start seeing it in other people. And that's when we get resentful because we're like, they're living the life that I want, but I'm not willing to take the action. So I'm just going to stay here in my victim role and not do anything about it. But I'm happy. But underneath, like you're getting sick. Like it's a, it's a thing, right? And this is the thing when you're not, you know, and this is why life purpose and intuition and everything is like so intertwined with being able to have a full healthy functioning body, like, and be able to embody the high vibration to do our purpose work. People are like, oh, I'm too tired to do my purpose work. I don't have this energy or this resource. It's like, well, what is the first step you need to take in that? Because in a sense, like if you're not taking that, you're going to get further away from it. But as soon as you start taking that step, everything and all your resources open up to you. Like it's a thing, right? It's a thing. <laughs> Yes. Yes. You're so welcome, Corey. Yeah. That's such a big, big thing for you to go through. Um, your son transitioning to the other side. That's so, so huge. Super sending you so much love. And this is where we can see into the other dimensions, see the reality and also, um, tuning in to who you are seeing and are they of the highest divine source light? Not just like, oh, look, they're amazing, amazing angel and they look white. <laughs> it's like actually seeing um, anyone can wear a mask, even in the spirit world. Anyone can wear a cloak. Um, so when we um, look at third eye, I'm going to do a recap. So if you guys have got any questions, just please let me know. When we are talking about the third eye, we are talking about the past, the present and the future all at once and then being able to see multi-dimensional into other realms and being multi-connected at all times. So our sleeping dreams are no different to our daydreams and being able to catch those visions is a thing, not just see them because they're always there. You need to train yourself to catch those visions and know that your intuition is talking to you all the time it's intertwined and it's always speaking to you all the time you just have to bring your conscious awareness to see that truth that the realities are all intertwined all the time and your intuition is always speaking to you it's just a matter of training that muscle to be the strength of that space yeah so uh so christina says is the purpose work clearing your chakras and meditations um so that's where we start, right? So you know how I said before, um, you know, like, yes, you can like have a spiritual awakening and be like on purpose and be this like amazing like person. And like, honestly, I would stay away from people like that. Like, because I, there's, there's highly evolved people. There is, but uh, you want to find the humble ones because there's the overinflated light which is the luciferic energy like yeah they might be of the light and the service and the highest you know like light but 
Is it an overinflated luciferic light that I'm your savior and I'm the one that can save everybody and come to me, I'm the light, I'm Jesus or like an angel or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> be mindful of those, right? You want to be mindful of those because there is the extremes, right? There's the luciferic and then the Ironman. I was going to share that actually, wasn't I? I'll share that. I'll make sure I do that this afternoon. Um, because that energy and that overinflated light can be like, yeah, they've got good intentions, but it's not coming from an empowering place for people. It's still in that sense of like, hey, I'm the one that can save you. Come to me. I'm Come and do it this way, right? And that means they're still siphoning your energy off you because they're like, people are like, oh, I can't live without you. <laughs> it's like, find your own connection to source. Nobody needs anybody. We only need to connect to our own source, right? And that's what I'm passionate about, teaching people. So when you ask, you know, is um, clearing your chakras and meditations the way to your purpose work? It's like, well, I think you said, is it your purpose work? And I said, it's the way to your purpose work, right? Because when we start, um, like, uh, when we start to awaken, okay, we're angry because all of a sudden the reality that we've known all our life has been shattered and we're like trying to like, trying to navigate this space around like, how can it not be what it was? Like, you know, like it's a big reality shift, right? Now, when we can start with the basics, right, of learning your energy, learning your body, um, understanding your cycles, learning how to take care of your energy, learning how to strengthen your energy, which you can start by doing with the chakra clearing meditation. Yes, it is free. Please send me a message if you don't have that. Um, it is definitely where you start in learning that. And then it's not that that's the only way. It's not that that's um, you know, the be all and end all, like it's a starting point. And then there's so many other tools out there. It's like, I always say to people, you know, if you go to, you know, when I was teaching yoga in person, I'm like, who are the new people in my class today? Um, and some people put their hand up and I say, I teach a very different style of yoga. If you do not like my class, please don't get put off by yoga. Please go and find a teacher that you resonate with because we're all teaching yoga, but we're teaching our aspect of yoga and every person has a different resonance with different people and I always say that right there's tools out there that you will resonate with and you're like oh my god this right and then it might get to a point you're like this doesn't feel good anymore and you need to evolve let yourself evolve and move on to what does feel good right because you will outgrow teachers and mentors and that sort of thing and you need to trust that evolution right so it's not that it's the only way, but it's definitely where we start, right? When you have a spiritual awakening, when you're learning your energy, when you're learning to understand where your tiredness and exhaustion is coming from all the time, we start by clearing our energy. We start by understanding our energy and how to separate our energy from somebody else and all that, right? It's definitely the starting point, right? Now, the more that you do that and become an Olymp Olympic energy work you become an olympic swimmer right like i said the the athletes don't become an olympian um unless they have done the training for it right like you don't just do a meditation once and you're an amazing olympic clairvoyant like it doesn't happen like that like it could right i'm not blocking any reality out but if we're coming from you know an asleep unconscious person there's a skill set that's needed right to train ourselves in that but we can advance very rapidly okay um so it's always good to keep in mind now the more we clear our energy the more we start to understand consciousness and our body and energy work and realms and traumas and how to shift them and like all this stuff when we clear out the weights and the unconscious baggage in our system and in our aura and we start to shift that out what happens is not only does our vibration and our light light up and all this stuff happen what also happens is that we start to trust ourselves more and the more we trust our intuition the more of those ideas from our intuition come in and the more that that enables us to see what our purpose is when we're covered with all this baggage and stuff, that's why people are like, I don't know my purpose. Tell me, Hannah. I'm like, I don't tell you what your purpose is. I'm the life purpose queen, but I teach you how to uncover your purpose for yourself and how to help other people do that. Because if we all empower other people 
to uncover their own subconscious material and transform that into the highest light, <laughs> we will advance rapidly as a human race. Yeah. <laughs> So there we go. I feel like that is the end of our third eye chakra for this round of our chakra journey. So we are in the crystalline activations and I will be releasing them over the coming days. Please keep an eye out for them. I've been recording and filming all weekend. They are very different vibration. They feel different. They sound different. And I'm just like, oh, I just, I'm like listening to them nonstop myself because I can't, like, I'm just like, oh, so different. <laughs> such a different energy vortex that I've been gifted to bring forth. So keep an eye out for that because this is really helping us in the ascension of our consciousness and awakening through the great awakening. So yeah, please keep an eye out and please share this if you think that anybody um, can benefit from this or you can tag their name in it or you can send it in a private message and I shall see you guys real soon. Yes, you're so welcome, Demi, saying it was amazing. You're so welcome, Philomena. You're welcome, Christina. Thank you everybody for joining live. I shall see you soon. Mwah. Love you.